Universal News TV. Welcome to your deep dive. Thanks for having me. We've got a stack of articles about the WNBA. Oh, yeah. And it's been. And this incredible year they've had. And it's been huge. It seems like you're particularly interested in the business and entertainment side of things. Definitely, yeah. So get this. The WNBA just wrapped its most watched season in history. Yeah. And we're going to unpack how this perfect storm of raw talent like Caitlin Clark, savvy marketing, and a sprinkle of celebrity magic. It's really remarkable. You made it all happen. You're spot on about the perfect storm thing, and you can't deny the Caitlin Clark effect. Right. But to really understand it, we need to rewind a bit. Before Clark even stepped foot in the WNBA, the league was already on an upswing. Okay. Building momentum you know, securing better broadcast deals. So the stage was set, but then Caitlin Clark enters the picture. For those who might not be as familiar, tell us, who is she? What made her the talk of the town? Imagine this, hmm. a college basketball superstar. Leading the NCAA in scoring, breaking records left and right, that was Caitlin Clark. Wow. She was the name on everyone's lips. Yeah. And when the Indiana Fever snagged her as the number one draft pick, the anticipation was electric. People who'd never even considered watching the WNBA were suddenly glued to their screens. It's like that saying, she was the straw that stirred the drink. But it sounds like the drink was already mixed to perfection. Was it her playing style that drew people in, her personality? It was a potent combination. On the court, she's electrifying, fearless drives to the basket, no-look passes, shots from practically half court. I love it. But beyond her skills, yeah. she brought this undeniable swagger, you know, charisma. Yeah. Fans were drawn to her confidence and her genuine love for the game. And you know what? It worked. All right, let's get down to the numbers because 2024 was a record-breaking year for the WNBA. Oh, absolutely. We're talking ESPN viewership up by a whopping 170%. ION saw a 133% increase. Even CBS had their highest rated WNBA games in over two decades. It's amazing. Those are some serious spikes. Were those numbers all thanks to Caitlin Clark? Here's where it gets interesting. Even the games she wasn't playing in saw huge jumps in viewership. Really? Which tells us that the league strategy was already working. They were attracting a wider audience. Caitlin Clark just amplified it tenfold. Okay, so she threw gasoline on an already burning fire. Exactly. And speaking of fire, let's talk about that June 23rd game, Fever versus Sky. Oh, yeah. Reese versus Clark, round three. 2.3 million viewers on ESPN the most watched WNBA game in Disney's history. Now that was a game for the books, but you're right, it highlights a crucial point. The league was already making strategic moves and they were paying off. Partnering with ESPN, getting better time slots, those things matter. Sure. Clark's arrivals just added an extra layer of excitement on top of it all. It's amazing how one player's talent and personality can have such a ripple effect though. But it wasn't just on TV, was it? We saw this energy translate to packed arenas, too. Absolutely. This wasn't just a viewership phenomenon. People were showing up in droves. Attendance was at a 22-year high, to be exact. Wow. That's unheard of in the sports world. It's remarkable. And you know, some teams felt this surge more than others. Like Caitlin Clark's Indiana Fever. I bet they were selling out arenas left and right. You're telling me the Fever saw a fourfold increase in attendance? Think about that impact, not just on ticket sales, but on merchandise concessions, the whole local economy. It's a slam dunk for everyone involved. But, you know, it wasn't just about the games themselves. The WNBA seemed to be creating a vibe and experience that went beyond the court. Absolutely. This is where we see the entertainment aspect really come into play. The New York Liberty, they were strategic about this. They understood the power of creating a buzz and atmosphere. Okay, so are we talking about Celebrity Row? Because that was genius. You got Remember how the NBA had Celebrity Row? Liberty took that concept and made it their own, inviting big names like Spike Lee, Alicia Keys, even Jason Sudeikis. It was the place to be seen. And let's not forget Ella Emhoff, the second gentleman's daughter. Having her courtside was a major power move, but it seemed like it was more than just getting famous faces in the seats. They hit the nail on the head. This wasn't about star power for star power's sake. The Liberty was intentional about inviting celebrities who aligned with their values. Right. It felt like they were building a community both on and off the court. This wasn't just a game. It was an event, a statement. 
You could tell that the celebrities who showed up were genuinely invested in the team and what they represented. Exactly. Yeah. And that kind of organic connection is something a lot of sports organizations struggle to capture. I have to imagine it makes the players feel incredibly supported too, seeing these huge names cheering them on from the sidelines. It definitely adds another level of excitement. <laughs> but here's the truly fascinating part. The Liberty even involved their players in the process. Wait, really? Tell me more. They actually took suggestions from the players on who to invite to Celebrity Row. Whoa, so Brianna Stewart could be like, hey, I think so-and-so would be amazing for Celebrity Row, and they'd actually reach out. That is incredible. That's the level of collaboration and player empowerment we're talking about. And it creates this awesome feedback loop. The players feel more invested because they have a say, and the celebrities are more likely to engage because they're there supporting someone they have a connection with. It's a total win-win. They've cracked the code on building genuine excitement and a sense of community around the team. So small. It's like they've created this incredible blueprint for success, both on and off the court. And the best part is, it's not a one-hit wonder. This surge in the WNBA's popularity, it's backed by serious investment. They recently secured a $2.2 billion media rights deal. Wait, hold the phone. $2.2 billion. That's not just faith in the WNBA. That's a resounding vote of confidence. Exactly. This deal shows how much the market values women's sports right now, and it speaks volumes about the WNBA's potential for sustained growth. It's clear they're playing the long game here, and it's paying off. From electrifying talent like Caitlin Clark, to savvy marketing strategies and a genuine commitment to their values, the WNBA has set a new standard. What's truly inspiring is that their success story has lessons for everyone, not just in the world of sports. Yeah. It demonstrates the power of authenticity community building, creating an experience that resonates with your audience. It's about tapping into what people care about and giving them something to believe in. So here's something to ponder as we wrap up this deep dive. If this is where the WNBA is now, where do you see it going in the next five years? What boundaries will they break next? What impact will they have on the world beyond the basketball court? It's an exciting time for the WNBA, and we can't wait to see what they do next. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. We'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for having me. If you like this content, please like the video and subscribe to our channel and see you next time.